Welcome to this sub-series on rebuilding a 351 Cleveland engine. Now much of this has been uh, already included in the car restoration I'm doing on an XC Fairmont, which is an Australian car. But for people overseas in Canada, United States, places like that, um, that don't have these cars, then the 351 rebuild that I'm doing would probably get overlooked. Um, so I just wanted to offer it to other people around, people that have got Torinos and Mustangs, cars like that, that also had these engines in them. Now. I'm going to sort of rehash what I've done in terms of there were excerpts from each of the XC restoration videos which I've sort of regrouped um, in its own playlist. So that way they're sort of available in one place and, and all sorts of stuff like that. So this is the first one which is the, the, the engine I've chosen and a little bit of information about it. The second one of course was the disassembly. This one's all about the block, cleaning, preparation, that sort of thing and a couple of uh, mishaps in terms of some parts I bought that aren't quite up to speed and I've sort of changed them and done this and done that so there's an awful lot in here I should say that relates to cleaning and people think that's a bit overzealous but at the end of the day um, it's the difference between an engine that lasts 20,000 k's or does 320,000 k's we need everything really really clean so that's what this one's about the next one will be about putting the rotating assembly in and camshaft and dialing that in and that will be later this week so I've got everything here to do it except the very first part that I needed, which was, of course, the rear main oil seal. And the only one I've got here is a rope one, and I don't want to use that. Um, I like the hard sort of, um, are they neoprene? I can't remember. Uh, the, the hard sort of two-piece rear mains, if you know what I mean, and they allow a lot more rotational feel as you're assembling the engine, of course. That's what I'm waiting on now. So, this is part, essentially part three, I would think. Um, for people that have seen part 20 of the XC restoration, most of that content's in this one, so I don't need to see it, um, bar one or two little changes at the end um, in relation to getting the block back because there was a clearancing issue and that sort of stuff. So, hopefully you enjoy it. Um, the second one, or the fourth, <laughs> the fourth one, about refitting the rotating assembly will be in a few days' time. Thanks very much. Problem, let's go to the engine builder and I'm taking absolutely everything to be hot tanked, including front end parts as well and stub axles. And given the condition, these ones here, given the condition of the front end when I got the car, I don't trust anything, so I want to get them clean and crack tested as well. So whatever they tell me they can't do or they won't do, I'll just bring back, but I'm going to try my luck and see if I can get most of this stuff done. Well, we'll see what he says about this little lot. We haven't got the fan there. I mean, you might tell me to get nicked with that in the radio thing, but it just means they don't have to clean them up. They can just dip them and then I can just paint them. It just makes it easier, that's all. I'm being lazy doing it this way. That's a bit there that I want to spot weld into the sump of baffle. Both of these are 302 sumps. I think the 351's had those. Every 351 I've pulled apart's had one like that. And the 302's have been empty, but anyway, see what he says. Right, well we're back to the engine builder, and we have some goodies. Alright, so the blocks there, we'll go into more detail about that in a moment. There's some parts and bearings, this sort of stuff. Um, we've got a lovely 20 over hypertectic pistons. Um, they look really good. Resized rods, ARP bolts, that sort of thing. Um, and of course, a crankshaft over there, I'm not sure if the camera can see it. Yeah, over here. Well, that looks lovely and clean. It's all been machined now and bored 20 thousandths. It's got new camshaft bearings in it. But the plug at the but the wash plug at the back hasn't been put in, so I supplied that so I can put it in. But before we clean it, uh, we have to clean it with safety water, of course, and make sure there's no uh, embedded grit or um, engine machining nonsense in the bores. But before we do any of that, we have to get a camshaft. I haven't got that yet. And dummy fit it just to make sure it rotates properly. And he's left a message there on a tag to make sure that's done because obviously we need to make sure that's all kosher before we can start building it and I also need a gasket set too. And you can see it's all lovely and machined on the decks. They're not zero decked, I think I mentioned that before because I didn't want to max the block out. So there'll still be a bit of gap between or a bit of clearance between the top of the piston where the deck is. I don't like maxing blocks out. Um, I just wanted to take up what was necessary which was the reason we only went to 20, not the more common 30. And going to 20 is actually dearer than 30 because pistons are more expensive, they're harder to get. And of course I managed to get those, or the builder managed to get those hypertectics, so that's all good. But, uh, that's all machine is uh, square with the centre line of the crank. And um, 
we're almost there we're almost ready to start building it but we're not quite ready to build it yet so I'm going to put it in a garbage bag these are council bin ones the big 240 litre ones um, always use a new one and we can wrap it up and keep it clean and of course that way we're in a windy garage and that sort of thing that way it'll keep that in much better state of repair and looking fresh it'll stop condensation or at least it'll stop it rusting and anything blowing on top of it and I'm just going to tie the back off Whoa. over here I'm not going to put a reef cover or anything in I'm just going to tie something around there a bit of string just to make sure it stays sealed because that really is important and of course we're looking at our NFG crankshaft and that's where the crack showed up under black light and also this one is a local crank it's got 351 cast, cast into it I should say but the new one doesn't have that and of course this is the crank we're using and it's a much smoother casting uh, than what the other one is and it doesn't have 351 markings on it because it's an American one it's actually a 4M8 so this one's all been ground and crack tested and all that sort of bizzo and so this is the one we're going to use in the car we can't use the other and uh, look I am very very happy with it so I think it's been ground 1010 so um, yeah much nicer looking crank much smoother looking crank and obviously not cracked either now I was very disappointed with this crank because it's never been ground before and I had high hopes for it but I've never seen a 4MA or a 4MAB and a standard Aussie crank together but they do feel a lot rougher in the casting um, and also on those knife sort of edges down here again it's sort of a lot smoother on the American crank now I think they use the 4MAs and the GTs or the, the early Cleveland 351s but what's particularly concerning about this crack here and there were some I should say sort of little round ones on the counterweights which weren't such a concern but the problem with this is it's right adjacent to where that hole is which is quite deep there so I don't you know in a, in a standard application it probably would have been okay and that's what the builder said but he was worried about it because it could be in a higher performance application which this car is not it's only going to have about 320 horsepower maybe um, but in a high performance application that's a bit of a time bomb so we really can't use that. Just give it a bit of a lube just so it doesn't corrode. Just to safeguard it for now until I'm ready to put it in. Right, well we're going to start building our engine now. And we have a few parts. And of course I've got the stub axles. This has nothing to do with the engine, but I've had them crack tested. Just because the condition of the car was, in, was so poor when I got it, I just needed to make sure they were cool. So they've been crack tested, they've come up with a clean bill of health, that's all good. There's some rockers, um, head bolts and push rods in there. Maybe get new ones, maybe not. We'll have a look and see how we go with those. Now we've got two oil pump drives here. They're both for Windsors. One's 351, I think one's 302. I think the 302 one's a bit shorter, but whatever the case, it doesn't matter. One hopefully will fit our Cleveland. And of course our full engine gasket set. Over here we have our brushes. So we've got our bore brushes and gallery brushes. We need those as well. Over here we have a bar of laundry soap, salt-free laundry soap, which we're going to use to wash the bores down with. There's some morning fresh there. I'm not sure if I'll use that. A lovely competitions cam with matching lifters. It's important to get them as a matching set. Uh, main and big end bearings here. We have some Molly rings, Hastings rings, a um, bit of ultra black, some assembly lube and cam and lifter installation lube. A good old GM sealer. We've got a camshaft installing tool, I should say. A special little socket to turn the crankshaft over when we get it in. Torque wrench. And, of course, we have our main bearing caps over there. Now, in this bag, we've got a rather lovely, sexy white T-shirt. The biggest size I could find. This is designed for the larger people. I mean, I'm pretty fat, but that's a bit too big for me. And I got it the biggest size so that um, there's more material on it. Of course, I can return it when I'm finished with it, which is a joke, because this is going to be absolutely ruined. And this is from Kmart. They're $5, and we need good white fabric like that so we can check in the bores to make sure there's no debris left after we've given it a good wash. So if anything grey comes up on here, we know it's not washed properly. We also need an oil pump, and this is a standard volume oil pump, not a high volume. This car is not going to be turbocharged, it doesn't need external oil feeds or anything like that. 
So I've gone for the standard milling, which is industry standard. It's a good one. Strip of plastic gauge. Now this, uh, the clearances on this have already been marked up at the machine shop. So we, we're going to use this anyway, even though I'm expecting everything to be within spec and all good. This is a heat gun, and just after we've finished washing it all down, we'll use a bit of compressed air uh, and dry it out with heat gun. Not too much heat on bearings and stuff. They're just a little bit to run over it um, to get rid of all the excess water. And there's a message. And also, another thing you should think about buying before you assemble an engine are some chips and chocolate and soft drink and a movie for your children because you don't want them coming out yelling at dad and all this sort of stuff while you're trying to measure things up. And so it's important on a uh, to do this on a still day. We're not in an engine reconditioning room. Here they come now, I don't believe it. We're not in an engine reconditioning room, so we need a nice still environment because we haven't got the cleanliness that an engine reconditioning room will offer. And we want to take the phone off the hook, put the mobile inside, shut the garage door and have our attention not diverted by anything. So for the moment we're just washing the block and preparing it, so it's not so important in terms of concentration, but when we put it together it needs to be perfect. <laughs> Is that you, Rosie? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is take a look at our camshaft. We've got our spec card there, which we need. Might leave that lying on here so we don't scratch it or anything. Right, so we'll take our camshaft out and it's got a little instruction thing on it, so I'll we'll cut that off. and I'll leave it on the cardboard, I don't want to be scratched or marked up. And we're not going to fit this, we're just seeing if it rotates in these new bearings, we need to check that out. So I'm just going to put the handle on it. It just aids fitting a little bit better, it's just a, a handle designed specifically for this sort of thing and we can just screw that in the bottom or in the front and that way we've got a nice purchase on it and so I'm going to lubricate these just with normal engine oil I've just got normal engine oil in here so we'll lubricate those and give it a trial fit in the block make sure it rotates properly and then we can start washing the block all right so we've <coughs> lubricated our cam and their bearings or and its bearings, and I'm just going really gently. We don't want to chip anything, we don't want to cause any damage at all. Okay, and you can see there, that's lovely and free. So we know now that our engine block can be washed down. It's not binding, it's turning very freely, and it's exactly the way it's meant to be, so that's cool. I can take that out again, repackage the camshaft, and get all the stuff ready to wash the block. Now this looks absolutely spotless and clean, but in fact it's very, very dirty. And I'll, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with this nice clean piece of rag. If I just wipe that in the bore, we've got all that grey stuff there. And if we put the engine together with this in here, it'll start and run and do everything it's meant to do, but it'll also wear out extremely quickly. So we need to get rid of all that um, machining debris, if you like, and make it so whenever we wipe the bore with this nice clean piece of rag, it comes out just as clean. So we're just using our soapy water with a bore brush. Probably wouldn't hurt to go this way so you can get into the longitudinal lines of the honing. But this will clean it up. I'm about to buy a new camera so hopefully it gives a better resolution than this one. Let's have a bit of a sticky. That's only a little bit, but already it's clean. Now the biggest, gee that is clean, it's a tiny bit there, we'll keep going a little bit. But what we need to do after this is dry that out and spray it with CRC, just to stop it rusting, because it will rust before our eyes. Still dirty at the top. Now in addition to washing the bores out, we need to wash the galleries. And I'm just using some brake clean and firing it down there. 
we'll run this nice long brush and we can see it going down through the lifter bores and that probably illustrates the lubricating weakness on the Cleveland so if we look down those lifter holes see there those lifter gallery holes are huge there's an obstruction in the center so I might go for a slightly bigger brush just on this outside part here to really scrub it out Oh, that's brake clean. That's right. I thought it was water for a minute. We'll go in this one. This one's further recessed in. Oh, straight. There is muck in there, there's dirty solvent coming out of it. So we need to scrub that little one a bit more. This is probably a bit silly, but I'm just going around with a heat gun, getting rid of any excess moisture. Um, most of what you can see there is oil residue. But um, it'll also help disperse any of the brake cleaner. Um, I've blown out the galleries with compressed air, but because we're sort of in the winter, I don't want any excess moisture sitting on it. So in terms of storing it now, the best thing to do would be just to cover it in CRC or some sort of lubricant and then put it back in its bag. But you don't want to put it in its bag if there's any trace of moisture there because everything will be rusted. So I've got the sumps and rocket covers on the left-hand side. They're all sort of painted in etch just to protect them from rusting. The ones on the right here are the ones off the Junkyard 302 and they had red paint on them and looked all right. A um, bit untidy but looked all right but underneath there was all, a whole lot of rust so I'm not sure. They're very clean on the inside um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use them. They're, um, they're not that good and look at the end of the day what I can do with them is cut a long slot in and then I can mark the push rods um, with a marker obviously and watch to see if they're rotating when we test the engine so I might resign them to that and get another pair but I've just put them in deoxidine for now they're, they're not very good so <laughs> I'm not sure that I'll use them right so getting back to the engine block we've given it a clean there is a few there or there is another process I want to do or sort of get involved in and that's washing out the boards with thinner now we've washed it out with soap and water and they do look lovely and clean but the last process we need to do is wash it with thinners because I'm told by the engine builder that um, if you get them spotless with soap and water they rust before your eyes and I know that's true because I've actually seen it and so this way you get them virtually clean I'll just get all that I sprayed it with CRC and ran out of time yesterday we get it virtually clean then we wash it out with thinner um, to the point where we use another new piece of that nice uh, sexy white t-shirt I bought <laughs> And uh, then we'll know that there is no doubt whatsoever it's absolutely spotless. So I'm just going around wiping out the excess, um, what's that stuff called? CRC. Because I didn't want to put it back in the bag last night with any trace of moisture. Because it would have come out this morning and found a ton of um, surface rust. And we don't want that, that's our enemy. So it looks lovely, it looks nice and clean. This rag's not that clean, it's a bit dirty but it's all right to just wipe out the excess. Now we'll get the thinner out and we'll start cleaning it again. We're just using GP thinners, um, which is what I use to paint the car. Let me just give it a nice big wipe on the bores and they're coming out beautifully. And it look, it's a pain doing this. I hate doing this, but at the end of the day, it is preparation and like any job on a car, if you don't do your prep, then, um, you don't get the result you need. So this lovely engine, I think I said before, will start and run 
but it won't last long. It won't have the capability of taking the heads off at 80,000 Ks and seeing hone marks still in the cylinders. They'll be well worn and so we want to avoid that. So I'm just going to continue. Then I'm going to get a new piece of t-shirt and do it again and make sure there's absolutely no marks. And I haven't put this video together yet but I'm assuming that the first half hour is going to be cleaning and preparing the block. But look some people would find that a bit boring I suppose but at the end of the day it's so important. So here's a brand new piece of white t-shirt. Wipe it in, not a mark. And that's what we need to see. Wipe it in, there's no mark whatsoever. And so I'm going to go around the cylinders again and check them to make sure I don't see the slightest bit of discoloration. And I reckon I've got it now. There's not a single mark on there. And so what we'll do Yep, not a thing. That's cool. And so what we'll do now is we'll whack a bit more CRC in there because it's very, very raw metal and um, that will sort of keep it from rusting. And don't forget also CRC tends to evaporate so when you put it on it's not there forever. You need to sort of keep the, applica keep the applications of it up. So we've got our oil Gallery plugs in, there's five on a Cleveland, there's two here, one right under there and that often gets forgotten about. One next to where the fuel filter go, or one next to where the fuel pump goes and there's two up the back. So there are five of them. So now what we've got to do is clearance the crank. As we finally put that in, although I have forgotten to um, fit this, the Welsh plug for the back of the cam, which was stupid because it means I've got to take all this off again, but I might do it last. I don't know if it's orthodox to do that, but I need to put that in. The main bearing is coming in three types. There's the slotted type like this, which obviously has to go in this way, and that allows lubricant to sort of flow up uh, from the pump and then get passed off to um, the camshaft. So they just sort of fit in like that, and they butt up. There's a tongue on them. They're the ones that go on the other side. So if you get these the wrong way around, you fry your engine because the thing will seize. And of course, you've got the big sucker like this one. Whoops which again is slotted and they go in the centre and that's where the thrust is taken on a Cleveland. So we'll go around and we'll put these in. This thrust one's the tricky one because it's very wide and we just locate it down like that. And so it's nice and flush and clean. I might change my gloves too. Just want to make sure they're really, really flush. <clears throat> They'll sort of even themselves out as we put the caps on anyway. But I'm just going to put the crank in, but I'm not putting the rear main or anything in yet, and I'm not lubricating anything. So we've got all of these in the this one is good. All of these in the right thing, or in the right orientation. They've all got the slots in so it all can get through to all of them. I'll drop the crank in now and we'll put the caps on and see where that gets us. Right, a lovely 4MA. So bloody careful. Well, here we've got our plastic gauge. This is actually broken, this one. And we're just putting a little thread of it on each journal. And that will tell us what the clearance is because we can measure it against the scale and size of the packaging on the side of the packaging I should say. So I'm going to go and put this on um, and that's the reason we need to have it dry so we have a very good representation of what the actual clearance is. Just putting a tiny bit of oil on the threads. We don't want too much because we don't want it locking up in there but just to enable it to just spin nice and easily down and then of course we'll torque them up in three stages. And so the centre one sat up a little bit, so you can't tap them. These ones you can just push down and they'll right themselves. They'll even, even themselves out. But the centre one didn't, but you can't touch them. You, you can't tap them because they'll burr. So you just have to keep persevering, taking them out and putting them in until you get them absolutely right.
All right, this is a Warren and Brown torque wrench, a good one. And I'm just doing these up in three stages. And I've got no extension. I've got the socket straight on the torque wrench and onto the bolt, which means it's going to be more accurate than sort of having it up a big thing like this, if you know what I mean. So I'm just... I'm at 70 foot-pounds now. And... Um, Then we go to 95, well, it's between 95 and 105, and then we can take these off and have a bit of a look. Well, I'm going to stop there because I'm not all that convinced that I'm happy with the um, clearances. Now, I don't know, <coughs> the general rule of thumb is that one thousandth clearance per inch of journal diameter is allowable um, but you know I don't want to go to the outside of the allowable gap if you're not all clearance if you know what I mean um, on a new engine I want it to be right on the money and perfect so I'm going to call the engine reconditioner tomorrow and just query it um, so I'm not all that wrapped about this because it's it's not what I wanted. Good news indeed, I've got the engine block back. Um, the bad news is, of course, I've got to go through the whole cleaning process again because it's been sitting in their shop and their swarf and all sorts of stuff around. Um, they alleviated the, the um, clearancing issue by honing the bottom of this cap, which has given a bit more crimp on the uh, on the bearing, and brought it back to two, I can't remember what it was, but it's well under two and a half thousand. So uh, these are all consistent now, apparently. They've been all mic'd up, that sort of stuff. So... I can put that back on the stand when my son comes out, when Charlie comes out, give it a good clean up and then start reassembling it. And I don't know if you can see down in there, I've put the Welsh plug in the back where the camshaft is, of course you just use a big socket for that. Uh, it's a 36mm one that fits quite well, that's not mine, it's Pete's from work. Um, I actually hadn't put that in before. Maybe should have cleaned the block again without that there, I have given the block a very very good clean before. But I don't like the notion of taking it off and then putting it on and taking it off the engine stand again. So I've just put it in now and uh, that should be fine. Listen to that rain. Well, I'm just taking these caps off again. And the purpose of this is to revisit the um, clearance issue I had on this centre thrust bearing. You can see it's just been honed. The face of it there has been honed. Not even a thousandth of an inch. Um, in order to give more crush to the bearing and shut that clearance up a bit. So I'm just going to recheck it. And once I've done that and ascertained that it's all good, then um, I have to re-wash all the block, which I'm not going to show in this video. I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I've already sort of shown how I did it before. But and of course, there's our crushed little bit of plastic age. And I'm an imperial sort of person. I can read metric, I guess, but imperial sort of preferable for me. And that's right on 2000. Hopefully you can see that clearly. That's the bit of plastic gauge there. And it's sort of, it's a little bit, oh, it's 2000, I'd say. Now that's good because these run a massive 2.75 inch journal on the main. And the rule of thumb is 1000 per inch of journal uh, diameter, if you know what I mean. So where the book says 1.5 on, or 1.5 thousandths up, that's actually considered too small for performance engines because they don't get all the cooling happening from the ore flow and all that sort of stuff. So that's well and truly good. And the other thing is to just make sure you get all traces of it off so we're nice and smooth. So of course all the bearings are out. They're all sort of together so that I know which order they go back in. Um, and now I've got to clean the block up. I'm not going to show any of that. Like I said before, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And then finally we can build the engine. There is one thing I want to stipulate though. And of course I want to draw attention to that hole down there. Now that's the hole that supports the spigot on the base of the distributor uh, where the oil pump drive shaft mounts. Now there are two sizes for that. Now the early one's a bit bigger at 13 millimeters and of course the later one steps down to about 12 and a half millimeters. So there are it's only a half millimetre difference, easy to make a mistake when you get a distributor. So I need to see what I've got here. I haven't actually bought the distributor for this engine yet, but I do have a couple of old ones, uh, which I can have a look at. So I'm just gonna pop this through the bottom. 
Now that is a perfect fit. That's out of the Junkyard 302, that Dizzy. Now I don't have the um, an electronic one for this, which I will get, but that's perfect. At least I know that's the right one. And of course this one is 13.04, so that's an early one. And that one is about the same. 13.07. So these are both early ones which fit that block. I tried them before and it fits nice and snugly, so that's cool. Now these are points dizzies, I'm not going to use either of them, but for running the engine in, or running the camshaft in I should say, I will. So the first thing we do, we open up our gasket set. We've got all the exhaust, some manifold end pieces there, valve stem seals, ends of sump gasket. Oh, that's not good. They're the rope type rear mains. I'm not using those. There's three of them. I don't know why they've got three. Normally these sets are supplied with two rope ones and two rigid ones. And I like the rigid ones because these ones, when you first put them in, hang onto the crank and you can't feel it turning all that freely. So I'm not using those. Hopefully the other ones are in here. Timing cards are also your fuel pump, oil pump. Crap, I don't think they're here. Hang on. They're not there. Bugger. All right. Well, that stops me today, because I'm not using those. I don't want to use those, I hate them. Um, the other ones just give so much more feel. The crankshaft will rotate nice and freely, so I can feel uh, if there's any binding or anything like that. We need to be able to feel that sort of thing. Right, well, there it is, all back in bed now. I'm sorry for people that have watched the XC Restoration Series that have doubled up um, on information, but uh, it was the, probably the best way of sort of repackaging this part of it. I did run the XW's Windsor engine as a separate thing as well um, and ran it on its own playlist. So that's the reason for doing this. If it is sort of repeating myself, I am sorry, as I said. So drive safely, enjoy your classic, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.